2010, I received a phone call one day, very exciting, around my house. Well, no, the phone rings a lot. <laughs> but when it's for me, that's kind of unusual. And it was from Jack White. Yeah, the man himself wanted to know if I would be interested in allowing him to produce an album for me on his record label, Third Man. I said, well, Jack, I'm gonna have to think about it. All right. <laughs> that didn't take long, it wasn't a hard decision. And I had so much fun recording with this young man. He's 35 or six then, and younger than my own son. And he, here I am taking directions from him, you know. <laughs> but I loved it. He, he just kept say, kept pushing me, do a little more. Come on, push one, to push. Any of y'all have that album? Just show it, some of you do. Okay, you listen to that song that I'm doing next, and you'll hear me say, I always have to push. <laughs> have you heard that? He left that on the track, he wasn't supposed to. So anyway, at, uh, what was I saying? We, we just uh, had, a, had a grand time recording together, because he pushed me. Nobody else had done that in years. It's kind of like, the guys that produce it think, I'm not going to tell Wanda Jackson how to do a song. Well, hey, Wanda Jackson can use some help, you know. <laughs> Don't be afraid of me. <laughs> so, and Jack wasn't. I was asked to describe Jack in an interview not long ago. <laughs> and I said, well, it's hard to describe a person in one sentence, I guess, but I think I would liken him to a velvet-covered brick. <laughs> because he is going to get his way. You have to keep doing it and keep doing that song until he hears it here like he's heard it in his head. And so, but uh, Jack liked, he read what I said. <laughs> And he liked it. He said, in fact, one day I decided I'm going to put it in my will. I want my tombstone covered in velvet. <laughs> He's that kind of guy. He's a sweetheart. So let's do a couple of songs from the album that he calls The Party Ain't Over. Here we go.
sad of me.